Assalamu alaikum. I am here to explain the origins today of projective identification. We are doing Melanie Klein. And in doing Melanie Klein, we, the first thing we need to do is to understand projective identification. Before I go there, very quickly, since you've studied this in level four in theory, we understand that Melanie Klein has two developmental positions on the child. The first one is called the paranoid schizoid position, where the child after birth coming out of the womb is absolutely almost paralyzed with fear, postnatal fear, known as annihilation anxiety. <clears throat> and the kind of fear is that I'm going to die. All kinds of fantasies take place in that stage of death or attack which basically are the child's death instinct projected out onto part and whole objects. That, and so the bad breast is seen not only as ungratifying, but the bad breast is also seen as something that will attack the baby, devour the baby, annihilate the baby. So there is terror and fear. And the kind of anxiety that comes from there is phobic, what really happens further on is that the child's ego is not strong enough to hold good and bad together. So apart from the phobia and the fear of the attacking part object breast or the bad mother, external mother, <clears throat> what also arises is something else. And that is not being able to hold bad objects together with good objects. You cannot hold good and bad objects together. The inability to hold good and bad objects together transforms into another kind of dilemma. It needs to eject, reject and disown the bad object, be it the part object breast, be it the whole object mother eventually, it has to get rid of it. To get rid of it, in fair ban, the child represses the object the bad object, the bad mother. But in Klein, it projects parts which are considered bad. So this was the paranoid schizoid position and the anxiety is known as a paranoid anxiety, fear of everything, and then the expulsion of the bad, so paranoid and schizoid. On the other hand, in the second position, which is known as a developmentally better position, the Splitting is resolved and integrated. The good and bad uh, mother or the gratifying and ungratifying mother or the attacking and protecting mother are both integrated into one mother. So the fear, paranoia and the splitting is resolved. And from there, what really would happen next is that the child starts feeling guilty, shamed, and embarrassed for having seen the mother as bad when she also loved him. In the integrated mother, the good and the bad mother is in one mother. So the child feels depression. Empathy arises in that depression for the good mother, who is also the bad mother. Now the child has the ego capacity to hold the good and the bad in one object, in one mother. When this happens, depressive anxiety takes the place of paranoid anxiety. And that is a position from where developmentally the child has evolved and splitting has ended altogether. So what will arise for the Kleinian analyst from these two positions? What will be projected onto the analyst from these two positions in the child? or in the patient who is still unresolved. If paranoid schizoid uh, in an internal state is not resolved, the patient or the analysand will throw or project anger, fear, paranoia, and badness onto the analyst which will demonstrate to the analyst that this person has not resolved the paranoid schizoid position. On the other hand, if 
the person is resolved and has reached integration and is able to hold good and bad together in the depressive position, then the person will project onto the analyst feelings of guilt, empathy, and perhaps possibly some levels of depression if it, these are newly resolved parts of the client. So the projection onto the analyst is very telltale. It tells you the whole story of the client's current position. We then go on to projective identification, which is a different kettle of fish. What does what are the very various aspects of the uh, of projective identification that you need to understand? Number one, internalization. Number two, inevitable splitting. Number three, getting rid of the bad because the uh, person is in the paranoid schizoid position and cannot hold bad together with good in the same self or in the same object. So what happens with internalization is that the child internalizes the external mother and the external self into an internal mother and internal self. And in the inner world now, there exists me, that is the baby, the self, and the other, which is the mother, and their relationship. Self, mother, and their relationship, internal. It is also for reasons of having a mother who will not go away, object constancy. This object is going to constantly be present. This mother is never going to go away. But, paradoxically, the external split in the paranoid schizoid position of good mother, bad mother is also interjected. So in my inner world, there is a good mother and bad mother and a good me and bad me. So there are four distinct permutations. Good self, bad self, which is the baby. Good mother, bad mother, which is the mother. And now again, because it's splitting is unresolved, the baby tries to get rid of the bad, mostly in the mother. How does the baby do that? It finds external real objects in the real world and then does one of two things. It projects onto them the bad and so it will see a bad aunt or a bad cousin or a bad someone else. And that other bad person or self is the uh, person is going to hold the ejected, rejected, disowned bad of the baby or of the baby's inner object. And so nothing really happens because the other person is not affected at all. Why is the other person not affected? Because the other person doesn't know that. Uh, the baby's bad has been projected onto that other person. So two things can be projected. The baby's self or the baby's bad object can be projected onto an external person. Projected only. That means it's a mental projection and the other person is not affected whatsoever. Next comes projective identification. When the baby has serious deep splitting, it's riven with splitting and almost to the point of psychopathology, which eventually, if, if it becomes chronic, will lead to borderline personality disorder, unresolved splitting, which continues on and on, and there is no hint of integration. Good and bad will always be separate, both in the self and in the object, in the internal world of the child or the adult now. Something is going to happen. Projection is not good enough. I, the baby, have to confirm that what was I considered bad resides in the other object. I will therefore induce my bad in the other person, make them, manipulate them emotionally, physically, and in every which way I will actually manipulate them to the extent they act out my rejected part. So let's start with mummy. My mother told me, I don't want to ever see you angry. 
anger is a bad notion especially if you're a girl shaadi nahi hogi you will never get married if you do if you show anger so do not ever show anger subdue yourself gussa pee jao if that kind of command comes be very listen very carefully so i have to eject it reject it i have to stay uh, pseudo calm i have to pretend but you i am human also i have uh, anger i will as a human response to my environment i also have anger but i have been told not to use it that's the parental command which is interjected it sits inside me is embedded in me that anger is bad so what i will do is i'll find somebody close to me not the neighbor or somebody socially known to me but somebody who is emotionally linked to me like a spouse or like a sibling or like a parent i will not only project onto them i will make them identify with my projection so in the case of anger the example of anger i will do things around the person in such a way that their anger is aroused I have been given this example before that uh, a woman wife has a squeaky clean, obsessive compulsively clean husband. So she goes to the bathroom and leaves hair in the hairbrush and a toothpaste um, all over the wash basin and all uh, the towel lying on the floor, wet floor with the wet towel, and that really arouses the ire and the anger of the husband, and the husband gets annoyed. because he has been manipulated or induced into anger when he does that it confirms to the wife that see i am not angry he is angry this anger was never mine whereas the anger has been created crafted manipulated and planted in the husband she wants to be able to show her husband identifying with anger whose anger her anger manipulated and planted in the husband so this is something you need to understand as an example of projective identification so the first step in projective identification is the parental message the second one is the split that occurs so here it will be anger versus calmness the related stance will be i am only okay when i am not angry the communication will be you see i am not angry you are getting angry at me the meta communication will be you are only okay when you are angry and i am not and the induced feeling will obviously always be anger this is just an example of one there are hundreds of projective identifications what i'm going to do now is to have a role play i hope the sound is better now because we film this in the hall we are going to get a role play of a mother speaking to the child and first inducing dependency uh, and helplessness and complete control and teaching the child it will only okay if it is listening and obeying the mother and then becoming dependent and then the second part i am going to do something different which is going to be the mother teaching the child to only be autonomous and only be independent to be accepted so let's see these two films first we are going to demonstrate maternal messages to the child of how to be and from this we will take it to projective identification here is the mother telling the daughter how she wants her to be drumming it in so it's embedded as the right way to be and the only way to be beta ye kya pehna hai aapne wo change why are you wearing the dress that i put out for you and why is your hair down tie your hair up i don't like it i don't like it this is not cute and this does not look nice and it's old and it's dirty it's like you need to go i don't oh. care if it's soft just wear it as a night suit you're not allowed to wear this and go down for uh, you know i'm not so expensive you told me how can i wear it yes so nice you suit? no because it's become old and it's it doesn't look nice now okay but i washed yes no no i'm i promise. don't argue with mama don't argue with her go wear go wear the dress i put out for you and just don't argue back and niche bhi ja ke do not argue with mamu and do not argue with anybody else okay be a good girl just listen to what everybody saying and just 
comply okay always just see that to be a good girl be a good girl. good girls don't argue good good girls don't talk back to mama okay i guess the only way to be is just to listen to mama i should probably not have a voice of my own the only way i can ever make mama happy is just to listen to her all your report card that's brilliant i knew that you could you know study and get these flying colors i'm so proud of you see you're an independent girl you don't need me anymore i know i know I I still like you being there sometimes but I am doing my best to do everything myself but I mean, mama can't be there for you all the time one day mama won't be there you have to be a strong independent yeah, girl you're right. only child baba is right. not here right. so sher ban jao tum dara mat karo just do whatever you need to do okay i will do my best i yes. will always do my and you will succeed yes. to do everything myself yes and and to be really good at everything i do and make you proud of me and that's I the promise. only way to be I mama is already oh, proud of you happy with me i am happy right? i am happy with you right now even but you just need to be more independent beta i love you mama oh, i love you too baby <laughs> So I guess the only way to exist in this world is to be self-sufficient, reliant, and there is no other way. So I have to be in this world by myself, autonomous, surviving, and existing. So as you saw in these films, projective identification, the first one was dependency. Where the parental message was, you are only okay if you are weak and helpless. To be wanted and loved by me, the mother, be dependent, or I won't be there for you. That was the message. So there was a split in the child. Autonomy was bad and had to be projected out, and dependency was good and had to be held and retained within. The relative stance, therefore, of the person doing the projective identification is helpless i'm only okay if i'm weak and helpless that is constantly communicating and showing helplessness and the kind of questions that will ask the analyst first the family member then the analyst is what should i do i can't manage on my own please help me but the meta communication which is the actual hidden message to the recipient of the projective identification is if you don't help me i will perish i can't survive and it is the meta communication that keeps the other the recipient bound in the <coughs> in the relationship despite the projective identification and the caretaking will be to deliver help and support constantly it drains the person completely it drains the recipient just like people say in anger I don't know since I've met this wife. I'm constantly angry. It's draining. Similarly, dependency. The con person is constantly asking for care, taking and help. And the meta communication is: if you don't help me, I'll perish. So the person is in a between a rock and a bad place because hard place because there is no escape unless there is divorce or running away. something drastic has to be done after years of exhaustion playing out the projective identification on to that let's take the second one which was power here the message is you be in charge be in control or i will leave you that's what the mother says as you saw in the film the mother saying be in charge be in control be autonomous be independent i will otherwise i will leave you so now in the what is the split here helplessness is bad and must be gotten rid of must be projected control and power is good and must be retained by the inducer by the projector the relative stance is power and control must be with me i must i'm not okay unless i'm strong and controlling the communication will be to the other will be and first to the family member and then eventually to the analyst will be do exactly as i say obey everything i say and therefore what is the meta communication here you can't survive without me 
if you don't listen to me, you will perish. It's the old archaic parental message being played out. And so the induced feelings demanded from the in the projective identification will be show me your incompetence, show me your weakness, show me your dependence, and everything they say and do will be about demonstrating dependence. So you see here the origins of projective identification lie in the parental message, a split occurring, the split good part being retained and the bad part being projected planted in the recipient and the recipient being made to play it out. Now the next uh, class we have will show you the role of the analyst in Melanie Klein through counter-transference in managing the projective identification towards one goal. And what is that goal? Integration. So I will see you then.